If the wilderness had a heart, it would be made of ice. An unimaginable amount of it. Alaska's glaciers literally drip life into the surrounding landscape. Their meltwater becoming a river, flowing like an artery into the forests below. Bears, salmon, and people all rely on this constant flow. But what does the source of all this water really look like? And will I have a chance to photograph climate change in action? Join me, Ian Shive, as I buckle up for a photographic journey deep into the Alaskan wilderness. Yeah, I don't want to be on the ice. Definitely, uh, we can put the chopper down on gravel. That'd be great. All right. In pursuit of an ancient water source few people have ever explored. This is Tustamina Glacier, an extremely remote glacier that takes about an hour to reach by helicopter. An adventure in itself. I'm really excited to be heading into Kenai National Wildlife Refuge. We're gonna land this helicopter in an area where very few people go along the northern edge of Tustamina Glacier. Uh, is it all right if we put stuff in the back? Absolutely. Temperature 18, 2.10, altimeter 3000. Favorite runway, pilot's discretion. I'm flying into an area deep in the backcountry of Kenai National Wildlife Refuge, Alaska. This glacier is just one of 40 that are interconnected, comprising the massive Harding ice field. Now right about your 12 o'clock straight up ahead, right where the ice ends, that's where we want to be. I spot an area below that looks like it would be interesting to explore on foot. Uh, we want to be down low because we're going to hike into the ice. Oh, okay. But finding a safe spot to land can be tricky. Our landing has a few false attempts. I just see where I go up my tail, then the dirt blew up, so I changed my mind. Mother Nature doesn't make a whole lot of flat landing pads, huh? Uh, we're off. So we go up again and try one more time. Uh, I think we're good now. I got my side good. Yep, this side's good too. Alrighty. Yeah, looks good. Finally, we're on the ground and I'm let loose to explore the ice kingdom. This is really an unknown place. So few people, if anyone's ever been up here, to hike in here would take weeks. So I'm really excited to get back in here, look at these ice caves, look at these formations, see what kind of photographs I can make, and really just appreciate the wonder of such a magical place. The first thing I notice is how different it all looks from the ground. The size of the blocks of ice are noticeably larger than I thought they would be from the air. What I'm crouching at right now is the beginning of all of life here in this National Wildlife Refuge because this drop, this little creek, this little stream eventually becomes the river. And that river is what gives life to this whole area, gives life to this peninsula. The shifting glacier also leaves behind unique formations and ice caves. And I want to take a closer look. Oh, wow. Gotta be super careful in here, because ice is falling, not just water. Oh, wow. Cool. All around me, I hear ice chunks falling off and water running. All of it trying to find its way out of this canyon, where it can become more useful to the fish, bears, and people. Pick one of these little blocks of ice up and it looks like a jewel. And honestly, they're almost as precious. Eventually, these are gonna be rarer than diamonds. I also thought far enough ahead to bring a glass. In just under a minute, you can see how much of this glass has filled up. I actually have one of these on my refrigerator. And maybe 
add a few years to my life with some truly fresh water. Ah, it's delicious. This is the closest I have ever seen a glacier. It is hard to pull myself away. Somehow by getting close to a glacier, I thought I would better understand, even better photograph, climate change. But my photos are really just a glimpse in time, a visual marker to one day be compared against when others come in the future. And hopefully, when there are still glaciers. <laughs>